Hey, you folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Your Premium House 4 Art of War expansion as Sweden. It has been, um, we've been playing for 19 years, and we are in a position where very shortly, assuming everything works out the way it looks like it's going to work out, we may in fact be able to vassalize Denmark, even though our war is to vassalize Norway. I'm hoping our mission doesn't like fail or anything weird like that. If we like end a war without vassalizing Norway, I'm concerned it might fail that. Uh, and that would be really, really disappointing. Russian Patriots. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. More rebels. So, and the other problem is, uh, you know, hopefully we don't tear our country apart. But uh, we're going to go ahead and keep pressing on the way we've been doing as much as possible here to um, hit our war goal. We'll see what happens with all these rebels. More rebels there. At least Livonian Order might have to deal with it. It'd be really nice if Pomerania went and fought them. Luckily, we do have a very, very, very high base morale, which is helping a lot of things pretty dramatically. Now, we should have 100% siege on um, on Denmark now. What we could do is actually, and we do have supply, as I say, start, um, start sieging the Shetlands and things. That'd be nice. So the biggest danger is having these uh, rebel stacks unify. That would be incredibly unfortunate. But there's not really anything we can do right now. Uh, losing, worst case scenario, we lose a, a couple of provinces to um, to Russia over here. Uh, and, or to Muscovy or something. What's the actual thing? Defect to Novgorod. Listen, we could perfectly well accept that. That would not be a massive problem. Um, if we can, in exchange, vassalize Denmark, that would be pretty good. Uh, if I detach, can I reach here? I can. Good. More sieges. Um, in the countries that are left, if I haven't already increased the autonomy, well, that has no effect because we that was part of ours. I think we've pretty much increased the autonomy everywhere we could where there's a sort of rebellion risk. So, okay, let's move along. So there's still another rebel uprising potentially coming. The Swedish peasants in Smolin. 2.2 years, though. The chance is pretty low per tick. And that's because we did lower their autonomy at some point, and they're still kind of pissy about that. Yeah, if I'm going to plan on doing this warfare, knowing the future, like knowing these mechanics, it's kind of interesting discovering this. I still don't have a lot of experience in Art of War right now, but knowing these mechanics, when you're planning on doing a lot of warfare, um, what is Denmark offering at this point? Income, renouncing claims, no. Um, don't lower any um, any um, autonomy. Because... Um, because you don't want to deal with this. I mean, long-term, lowering autonomy is not bad. Although, again, it does decrease automatically over time, but quite slowly. If I was going to be at peace for a long time, then it makes sense. And then you can leave a stack of troops over here, some nonsense like that. But um, but as is, oh well, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to keep, once these stacks like refresh themselves, I'm going to move the extra dudes off of the siege to reduce how many, how many people might die from attrition. Sorry, Norway. How's our ticking war score? Oh, what is this? Ticking war score? Oh, you get information over here. Oh, was that always here? Ticking war score is 12. You can achieve 13 more. Is it literally the same indicator? Yeah, and it's going up. Oh, that's handy. Excellent. And if we do hold our 100%, if we do hold the war for five years in total, by having 100% um, of Norway, which we don't, we'd be able to get 100% war score, but we'll keep going. As the, the length of war was still pretty short last time. Uh, let's go ahead and position what troops I have in Smolin to um, to try to reduce the rebellion risk. And again, I'm just going to keep plucking off troops off these sieges that I can to reduce the... Um, um, yeah, if they do show up here, we might just get smashed. Um, to reduce the attrition that we suffer. I'm going to go ahead and invest a little bit more money in some uh, infantry over here. Even though it'll put us above our, above our force limit, it's going to be pretty useful um, to finish off the rebellion. One, the siege of fine. We are getting some negative war score for uh, the fact that Pomerania lost some battles over there, which is kind of annoying. Just out of curiosity, uh, would you be willing to... Listen, Norway, would you be willing to let me vassalize Denmark? Not yet. 
but it's mostly because it's exceeding the uh, the war score. Do 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 do. We might be able to do this, but at what cost? It's forest here. At least we'll get the defensive thing. As long as we're in place, we'll get the defensive boost. If um, we do get some um, peasants that show up here. Now, does this reduce... No. Earth Ramparts improve the missionary thing. And, of course, our defenses and the supply limit. We're going to want Earth Ramparts all over. Hopefully, we'll get start getting the quests soon to um, to build Earth Ramparts. Because it's nice. It's like 25 military power every time. Um, I can afford to lose a Diplo power right now. Again, we've got a Diplo tech, but I, I don't feel the need to rush to unlock this stuff. And B, I want to make sure I've got unlimited points to negotiate our peace deal. Let's move you over here. Okay, and that is the Rebel Uprising that's at risk, right? It's these Swedish peasants, and they'll only show up in Smolin. It's only a 4.4% chance of ticking. But as soon as it ticks, there will be a rebellion. So we've got to be ready for that. Sink some ships over here. Win another siege. More ships are going to move out. Um, I can probably... Yeah, I don't need all the ships over here anymore, just in case we need some reinforcements. Although we should win that handily. Not the, it's not a um, an inner sea, though, so we're not getting our big bonus. Oh, these are light ships. Against light ships? Against cogs. Never mind. You can stick around over here. Yeah, we'll stay, hang out over here. It would also be nice to go and smash these rebellions before they get too much work done. Um, but. But what? Let's actually go see if we can finish this one off before they finish the siege. Pro that seems unlikely. Um, but we'll try. In even numbers, we should be fine. We should have much, much better troops than any rebellion. So we'll see what we can do. Yeah, well, on that siege. But the other thing is if we can stop them from combining. We do want to stop them before that happens. So speaking of combining, let's have these guys stop here. These are our cavalry, so they should be pretty quick. Looted penalties are going away. Peace offer from Denmark. How do you like this one? Oh, so close! So close. Now, I won't be able to vassalize all the things. But Denmark is a priority. It's much, much richer, much more powerful. Uh, and unless we've got a mission, it's impossible for us to vassalize this. It might be actually impossible for us to vassalize Norway as well. Um... Because right now, I think we're getting half price, and it's 53%, which means it'd be 106% to vassalize them without the mission. Oh, that is a lot more peasants than I expected. Alright. Now, well, let's deal with the religious ones first. Oh, the Livonian Order wants to white peace. I'm quite inclined to say yes. We had 24% war score. But I did say war reparations. Oh, you'd be willing to do that. No white peace. War reparations and give me a little bit of money. And then we'll take you out. We're going to lose a little bit of war score in a sense, but they'll also have less... We'll have even more strength of alliance. And potentially Pomerania will come and, I don't know, help with rebels or something. Negotiating merely for themselves. Oh, now we have 92% effective war score. Nice, right, because, oh, because with the new mechanic, by having less territory outside of the war leader, the fact that I occupy so much of the war leader is giving me more effective war score. With the subjugation, CB, like that. Yeah, there we go, 50% cost for enforcing vassalage or protectorate. And it, even without the primary, they take this. It's bullshit. And all your treaties with Denmark, uh, that would, yeah, that... So, while they would be potentially willing to accept other things, you can never go above 100%. So, Denmark will become a vassal of Sweden, nor will it give me 13 ducats. Yeah, I'll get a bunch of aggressive expansion. I suspect we might get a uh, coalition after this one. But, what's important is we... Bam. Son of a bitch. What's important is that we won't get any overextension. Oh, and all these rebels, these Swedish peasants are in Norway. Oh, that's freaking amazing. Okay, let's bring our troops um, home here. 
Let's grab all of our ships. We're going to dock them. Get them reorganized. Get them out. Our armies are holding out here. Actually, we'll go ahead and start the attack. Just to make sure they don't combine. So, uh, Norway. How do you feel? Oh, really? You won't royal marry me? Okay, but we can start improving relations. We can get up to plus 200 uh, improved relations. Um... And we might turn them into a march. In fact, a march is literally, it's literally what this uh, march would be, would be on the frontier. Um, historically, a march and a uh, county are the same. So how it's being used here is a little bit different. A march is like a county that tends to be on the frontier and is more of a militaristic kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and pump up my diplotech at this point because I don't need to save the diplomacy points. It would be nice if we could get above, uh, like ahead of time so that we could get a bonus to trade, but that'll be fine. We're still focusing on administrative power, which is okay. We've got three years left for our Regency Council. Then we'll start to get a few more points. That'll be nice. Other than that, we're just going to keep um, fighting down these rebellions. I can probably start coring Ingram and Lind again. And hope that we can pull that off before it gets, uh, it gets I don't know, um, I need more rebellions. Let's move these troops over this way. Swedish peasants have entered. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, then wait here then. Oh, are they going to combine? I mean, luckily, peasants are pretty weak. But I guess they're going to leave uh, They're going to leave Norway because they're actually my peasants. Which is fair. I mean, I can't really complain too, too much. Although, this is where they live. You live over there. So why aren't you, like, pillaging where you live? So, yeah, still have a big uh, morale benefit. All right. A little bit annoying. We will need some... Uh, oh, Pomerania. I love a royal marriage. Uh, we are going to need cogs at some point. Should I start doing some conversions? It will increase the local revolt risk. Yes. There's too much orthodox. We're going to have to start dealing with it at some point. One way or another. Um, let's go ahead and deal with these guys. clean everything up uh i am above my force limit which actually i should go ahead and merge those guys and i'm still over my force limit really hmm yeah all right i guess that's fair do 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 so designate march I don't think they, well, I mean, they might get independent support, but they can't do that for a long time. So by doing this, more manpower, more manpower recovery, force limit, yada, yada, yada. Now, at some point, I will have to suck them in because I will need, I'll need uh, Midland and Jayland over here. I'm going to go with that. I don't know. Um, to form Scandinavia. But I don't have to worry about that until I get to admin tech level 10. So at that point, I'll have to revoke their march status and start integrating them. Um, hopefully that doesn't reset the 10-year timer, but it might. Still, it's going to be really useful. In fact, uh, if by any chance Denmark decides to fabricate claims to the south, then I can press those claims, and that would be really double useful. Um, ma vassals are really, really nice these days. All right, let's, uh, we're going to ignore the uh, sieges for now. We're going to go and stomp the actual rebel counts. Oh, yeah, see, they unified over here. And actually, if they triple unify and we've got a 34 stack, that'll be a really, really bad day. Uh, to the point where... Mm, it would be nice to not add more... I think they add nationalism. It would be nice to go and stop that. There's no way around, huh? I can't... Uh, can I walk through Norway? Or, um... Novgorod? No? No? No, they hate me a lot. I did take a lot of territory off them. Fair enough. Uh, interesting, no coalitions have formed yet. So are all my ships in one place? They are. So let's detach the light ships and have them patrol the Baltic Sea. They are currently losing money, but there's a lot of reinforcements and stuff going on. We're over force limits. We're reinforcing, which is the bulk of our cost. And then we've got the mercs as well. So fair enough. Can I combine these guys yet? Norway has entered a treaty of support and penance for Denmark. Ah, uh, there. 
We might be able to get uh, Denmark to like us enough okay, given some time. But right now, there's going to be Dice Appeared. I don't know if they can declare war on me instantly. They may have to wait 10 years before they can do it. Or however our truce is. I have no idea, actually, how that works. I assume they would have to wait, because otherwise it would be pretty stupid. Oh. All right, we'll just wait for our counts to regroup over here and then go and smash that last stack. It sucks that some of our troops are stuck over here. That's really a bit disappointing. I should mothball the galleys. I could build some more trade ships as well, but I won't. Uh, the fact that our legitimacy is so low and is not helped by our regency is part of the reason we have more national unrest, unfortunately. In fact, I suspect that our national unrest is positive, which is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, I might finish this D siege. Maybe there's no need to rush this, actually. And you know what? Hang on, let's go and smash these guys before they uh, finish the siege, and certainly before they group up. Luckily, they're getting a bit attrition, especially here. It is the winter, their big stack in foreign territory. It's actually hurting their numbers quite a bit. Yeah, I like that. Um, and while I still am not making any money, I'm going to go ahead and drop off some extra troops just to make sure we can flatten this quite quickly. And then I think we'll be entering... Well, no, we won't. <laughs> I was going to say entering a long period of peace. Well, we still have uh, our mission here. That being said, our truce timer with Norway right over here has been reset. Yeah, because we went 100% war score, it's 15 years of truce. So it's going to be 15 years before we can attack Norway um, for vassalization. We may or may not decide to attack someone else. Um, there's a lot to be said about letting things properly rebuild. Our manpower would be nice. Um, would be really nice. But it's hard because expansion is also really good. Right? No one's going to say that expansion is bad. Although it'd be nice to, again, not play a game where we're constantly in uh, non-stop um, coalition wars. Alright, let's smash this before it finishes this. This siege might complete. Um, but we'll actually have the numbers to go and challenge them pretty easily. That's good. Oh, they got another tick. The walls are broken. Well, let's find out. Don't really expect we'll get there in time. Let's go ahead and merge as much as we can. If we do beat them... Oh, good! Because um, if they do finish a siege, I think they lower the tax revenue in the province for an extended period of time. Excellent. All right, let's go and finish these guys off and then go and besiege all the things. Because the sieges are actually advanced, the whole rebels break country thing here. We've got to make sure there's no, nothing occupied. The zealots as well, but the zealot count is not enough to convert Sweden, so. Merge up a little bit more. Certainly still above the force limit. Yeah. As soon as we finish this fight here. Um, actually, hold on. Let's go and drop... Two groups of injured mercs. Cancel them. That'll put me at my force limit, which saves me a ton of money. Plus, I'll save a bit of money on reinforcements as well. And there we go. Right now, I think mercenaries are the bulk of my military. Jeez, it's like playing as like the hunts or something like that. Still, good, fast progress. God, being able to abuse that. Well, I think we there's we probably would have got a mission to try to vassalize Denmark as well as part of this whole Colmar Union nonsense. So um, I suspect it's not quite as abusive as I'm stating on first glance, uh, because we probably would have finished the mission with Norway, completed some other mission, like build a rampart, and then we would have got a mission to do it to Denmark. But maybe not. In any case, this is going to be really good. And I'm much happier having Denmark as a march. Norway, I'll probably just integrate at some point, just because they're not really in a position to attack. And they're going to tie up a, um, a relationship. They're not really going to fabricate claims. Although I say that, hold on, I gotta remember that um, I'm gonna want to go after the Orkneys once I have Norway as a vassal. Mwahaha. Uh, where's my troops? Here. Detach. Oh, uh, hold on. First, select army. We're gonna detach the mercs. From the mercs, we're gonna merge you guys to eliminate some of you. We'll send the mercs up to here. And then we're gonna split my real stacks to do that. All right. Good. Free that siege up. Um, rebellions are looking pretty good. Danish patriots are coming. Looks like 10 years right now. These guys have all recently rebelled and been beaten down, so we shouldn't get any rebellions in quite some time. Let's go ahead and speed up time. We're actually making a profit. Uh, as, the, um, as our armies are fully reinforced, 
our profit will increase a bit. So we're getting attritioned up here. Detach a siege. I'm going to move down to, um, I don't know, the coast somewhere where we've got a pretty high supply limit. And I keep the mercs around for now, uh, just in case someone just spontaneously declares war on me. I've got a free diplomat. So right now I'm improving relations with um, Denmark, making them actually like me slightly, which is quite nice. Fabricating claims is risky. You get some extra... Um, oh, we want to crack down on it. We don't want more local unrest. That would be bad. I'm going to spend the diplo points. Um, we don't really want any more aggressive expansion penalty from being discovered fabricating a claim. And... I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. I like the idea of going after Scotland on behalf of Norway once we vassalize them in 15 years. I think building up our, um, our economy... Also... Um, since we are behind the time on admin tech, and we don't have our ideas yet, it would probably be nice. And we might grab humanist. Actually, humanist would probably be really good. It makes it de-incentivizes uh, us from going and just annexing provinces right now. Okay, that's good. So let's send you to, I don't know, the capital. Although, hold on. Maybe you should stay somewhere where there's some unrest. Do we have any? A tiny bit. Tell you what, go, go and stand here because we got a tiny bit of unrest. That'll probably go away, away once we're cored. Uh, how come I can't? There we go. Novgorod is a rival. You've arrived there. Okay. Education for a king. I don't think I've ever seen this. <clears throat> the tragic passing of the previous king has left Carl Philip Spar without a parent, but not without guardians or tutors. Advisors serving at the court are preoccupied with giving him the best education available in preparation of ruling Sweden. Right. I can't declare war on Norway, even if we didn't have the truth because of the... Uh, the Regency. Hoping to gain favor and influence in the future, many people try to serve as primary influence. Ultimately, one of them is likely to succeed, impacting what sort of ruler Carl Philip Spar will turn out to be. Are you kidding? We're going to get a bonus to a skill? Now, if it's just a plus one or a plus two, uh, I'd want to put it in admin. If it could be a more random number, I might want to put it somewhere where I have more of a window. Now, you, at this point, I think just more admin would be really good. I guess it depends on what our first idea will be. Right now, we're still focusing on admin power. But what should our first idea be? Um, religious ideas are not going to pay off now. Maybe later, depending on how, what the um, the makeup of um, of Europe looks like. On the other hand, we could use this to war against uh, orthodoxes, right? Because the Deus Volt gives us the permanent CB against all heathens and heretics, which means if you're Catholic, you can war against Protestants, Reformed, Orthodox, and also all the Muslim sects and so on and so forth. Um... Money is always good. I'm not going to go expansion because I don't want colonists this time. Uh, administrative is fine. Humanist is really tempting. And I've never, I don't think I've finished doing the humanist thing yet. On the other hand, we could go straight into a military idea, which is really popular. And in fact, is probably the better thing to do, especially if we're worried about a potential war against Muscovy. Hmm. We don't have, well, we do have heretics. We have orthodox. So that would help a little sooner. Dropping national unrest. We have a lot of that. And it's going to bounce back. And we've beaten down these rebellions, but they will be back. You know what? We will start with humanist. It might be crazy. But, um, all right. So, right now, we're at 4, 2, 3. Still says 4, 2, 3. Maybe we need to wait for a follow-up event. Maybe when we come of age. Ah, Muscovy has rivaled me. Uh, oh, I do need to declare a new rival. They've already been there. Um, well, I don't need to. Vassalize Denmark. Nice. But uh, we're missing out on five points of longtime rival. Um, you know, I'm assuming France is Burgundy. No. Austria, France. Oh, yeah. And England. So if I rival Burgundy, France, England, and Austria will like me slightly more. So that seems like the way to go. Austria's allies are Scotland, Lithuania, and Pomerania. Really? That's a bit awkward then. No. I was looking at the wrong one. There, I was looking at my own allies. Brittany, Switzerland, Castile, which is fine. We'll recall. Oh! Oh, right. Denmark being a march. Ooh, that is true. I forgot about that. By being a march, Denmark's um, influence is... Uh, the, the amount I can improve relations with them is capped to 100. As opposed to a... No, we didn't get a boost. Uh, as opposed to a um, 
a vassal, which we can go all the way up to plus 200 by improving, which is an important distinction. We really need them to not be hostile. Historical rival. Lots of aggressive expansion, for obvious reasons. Hey! The education Carl VIII uh, had growing up during Regency prepared him to rule as a king, just as we hope. Uh, the advisors provided are proud of having left such a lasting legacy. So it's plus two. Okay. It's important to note, because if I already had a five, I actually would have, like, overkilled it, because six is the max. Look at that! That's amazing! I should take away the uh, the focus over here. We'll be able to reset it in ten years, and just have it be a little bit more even. But, although with twelve points, that really makes it nicer to go uh, humanism. Because we'll be able to go up that quickly. Uh, recent uprising has expired, so now we'll get a bit more progress towards um, rebellions again, which kind of sucks. You can see we've got some unrest going on again in some of these places. Um, these mercs, let's go and sit them in the Kex home, which actually will attrition them slightly. What about Neva? There we go. We'll go here. We'll drop it slightly in Neva. Or Neva. I don't know how it's supposed to be said. We finish that siege. Muscovy declared war on Novgorod. It's not terribly surprising. Uh, let's go and sit over here. Finish that siege. Are you still? Okay. Then we'll have you join in over here and just try to reduce it a little bit. And mostly it's going to be peace. Peace in our time, I declare. Uh, Muscovy going after Novgorod. They might just swallow it up in one fell swoop because they sort of kind of can. Um, because we nibbled at it a bit too. Definitely, we are going to have to worry about conflict with Muscovy. Absolutely. Um, but, and we could do that now that we're not in Regency. We don't actually have a CB against them, I don't think. I could, just in case, just in case I want to keep it in my back pocket, I'll go and start fabricating a claim. Uh, maybe up here, in the north. Uh, it still has, a, oh, it does have a level 2 fort now, but it's got more coast access which I can use to increase my naval force limit. Speaking of naval force limit, oh, actually, I've got actual force limit as well. Um, let's start building an actual military then. One, two, um, and three. Naval force limit. We can build six more light ships. And I'm going to keep focusing on light ships. Um, the inner sea here, yes, we could fight with uh, galleys, um, but I think the size of the navy in the inner sea is not going to be terribly relevant. I'll keep what galleys I have. And, uh, but I will build more light ships to try to get more trade. So let's queue up six of those. We have the money for it. We're making actually a decent bank. Um, I could cut back on my maintenance. In fact, I should. Unless I get sneak attack, I know I don't have to worry about rebels spontaneously appearing on, um, on a province, right? I'll always be warned before there's a rebellion. So I'll hopefully, hopefully remember to put up the maintenance. Probably I won't, but you know, in theory, it would be nice. Um... And yeah, we might start to look into building some uh, terrain improvements. In particular, it would be nice to start getting some armories up all over the place uh, to increase our manpower limit. Um, but that'll have to wait until next time. Hope everyone is still enjoying the series, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.